In this video we're going to see just how easy it is to deal with uh, trig word problems and developing trig equations from them. Uh, this is a Ferris wheel question. You should immediately know, even though it doesn't explicitly say trigonometry, that this is going to be a trig question because it's something moving in a circular motion. So it's going up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then down. Same thing with waves coming in and out or you know pedals going around, something like that. Uh, those are all clues that it's going to be a trig function. Um, because we know sinusoidal functions or trig functions move up and then down and they continue doing that forever. So I'm going to always start these by writing our general form of any trig equation. I'll put sine in here, but sine can either be cos or sine. Um, I'm going to use b, x minus c, plus d. And the reason I like this general form is because we apply all of the transformations in alphabetical order. So A is our vertical stretch, B is our horizontal stretch, C is our horizontal shift, and D is our vertical shift. The great thing about these is we, can, we have formulas to instantly identify A, B, and D, and then C is a little bit trickier. Let's look at the situation we have in this question. A Ferris wheel has a diameter of 17 meters. Okay, so there's some wheel. I'm just going to draw a picture here. This isn't really the function, but we know this is 17 meters. Uh, you board at the bottom of the Ferris wheel from a platform two meters off the ground. Okay, so here's the bottom. Here's the bottom of the platform. We know that's two meters off the ground. 17 more, so that means the max must be 19. All I'm doing is reading the question here. And then we know it takes 25 seconds to reach the top from the bottom. So if you think about this path, that's 25 seconds. So we'll keep that in mind. Great, and now we just need an equation uh, to represent the height of someone getting on here as time goes forward. So you want to say, okay, after x seconds, how high is the rider? Great, let's go through our equations for these different variables. A is our vertical stretch. It's also our amplitude. The easiest way to find A, max minus min over 2. If we think about what amplitude means, it's just the distance from the middle, so whatever this is, to the top, or the middle to the bottom. So this top half of the equation is taking the full distance from the max to the min, and we're just cutting it in half. The max we say is 19, minus 2 is the minimum, over 2, which is 17 over 2, which is 8.5. So we've already got our A value. How about B? B has to do with the timing. So we know this is always, if we're dealing with uh, radians, it's always 2 pi over the period of our function. What's the period of a function? It's the time it takes. It's always going to be time to start repeating. So in this case, it's 25 seconds all the way to the top, and then another 25 seconds down to the bottom, so that's 50 seconds. If we reduce this, this is pi over 25. That is our B. We've already got two values. So we've got A, we've got B. Let's go to D because there's a nice easy formula for D. D equals, uh, again, this is our vertical shift. So it's the max plus the min divided by 2. And all that's saying is that's taking the average of the max and the min. We're looking for this sort of horizontal equation of axis. Max is 19 plus min is 2 over 2, that's 21 over 2, which is 10.5. So in other words, the wheel's been shifted up 10.5 and then stretched by 8.5. So we've got all three. Now the tricky part. So I'm just going to develop our equation so far. We're at y equals 8.5. I'm going to leave sine or cos for now because it can be either sine or cos. Um, B, we said, is pi over 25. For x, I'm actually going to put a t in instead of x, just changing the variable to represent time. And plus 10.5. So all we're missing now is to determine whether this is a cos function or a sine function and what that means for our um, horizontal translation as well. So c and then sine or cos. This one's actually really easy. The fact that we're starting at the bottom of our, we're starting at the very minimum, right? So at time zero, we're at the minimum. If you think about that, if we drew, if we started to do it sinusoidal, it would look like this. We're starting 
starting at the bottom and we're moving up and then back down to the bottom. So what function normally starts at the bottom? Well, cos we know starts at its maximum. Sine starts in the middle. How can we change the maximum starting point? So again, the normal cosine function starts here at the top and goes down. How could we translate this so that it starts at the bottom? Well, you can see we can just flip it. How do we flip it? We make a negative. So I'm just making 8.5 negative here, and then I can call this cos, and then there is no horizontal translation, or minus zero here. We don't have to worry about that because the fact that we've made a negative, that reflects the curve in the x-axis, so it takes the normal cosine function from starting at the maximum to now starting at the minimum, which is exactly what we're doing because we're boarding at the bottom. So hopefully this is clear. Again, these questions are not difficult because they're easy to recognize, something that moves in a circular motion. A, B, and D are simple to get because they're the formulas the way they are. They're not affected whether it's cos or sine. The only thing that is affected is your C value and try and make that as easy as possible um, by using cos or sine to your advantage. You can always email us more questions, info at arnoldtutoring.com. Good luck on your next trig function question.